Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my Jupiter moon hopping series that I'm doing. We started off on Callisto, I think, and we worked our way over to Ganymede, which we're at now. We're in orbit around Ganymede. We're going to land, and then we're going to take off and go to, um, where are we going next? Europa. We're going to land on Europa, then we're going to go to Io. Now, this part in the series uh you can if, you, if you're really familiar if you're if you're if you don't really want to watch it you don't have to there's nothing that we're going to do in this video that really has anything to do with imfd we're just going to do a landing on ganymede and it's that's not any different than if you were going to land on the moon or mercury or some of these other airless bodies and we were, we're all set up in the last video we uh you know made sure that our plane was aligned which we did a little bit late. I think if we thought about it a little bit sooner, we could have saved a little bit of Delta V getting our plane aligned with, um, with Ganymede, but I just didn't, uh, with Ganymede base, but I didn't think about it. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and land here. And again, if you don't want to watch this part, feel free to skip ahead to the next video because we're basically done with all the IMFD stuff here. So, uh, unpause and let me bring up VOR VTOL. And in this particular in this particular scenario, I already have VOR VTOL tuned in to the correct uh, the correct uh, what is it the the beacon the radio beacon at the base because it uses this I have it set up so that it uses all of the same frequencies as uh, Brighton Beach. So we've got navigation one tuned into the radio beacon, and we've got nav two for landing pad one, nav the three for landing pad two and so on so let's bring up VOR VTOL for here and we uh, we're not going to bother going all the way around to the halfway point and burning down it would probably save us a little bit of fuel to do that uh, hover time wise actually yeah let's go ahead and do that so we're going to pass over Ganymede base one thing I do want to watch, though, is my orbit, because, again, when you're in orbit around these bodies that have, you know, the, the, the Earth-Moon system is comparatively, be, comparatively, be, comparatively, that's the word I'm looking for, comparatively stable compared to uh, going, compared to the orbits that you'll experience uh, around Jupiter and Saturn, your PEA and APA, according to uh, Orbit MFD, you'll notice that they'll kind of hop around a bit. And that's not just because of non-spherical gravity sources, which we do have enabled, but it's because the other moons are tugging on us quite a bit, and it's having a real impact on our PEA and APA, which is why on these types of moons, I typically orbit a bit higher, because you'll find, I think I found in some cases that if you orbit just at 20 kilometers, it can actually, if you have to go forward by more than a few orbits, and it may even be the case here at Ganymede, but you'll find that a few orbits later, your PEA is below the surface, so it so I tend to start off a little higher on these moons. All right, let's go halfway around like we always do. And uh, let me bring up base sync over here. And we're going to target Ganymede base. And we're going to switch to uh, direct. And we're going to be a little bit off from the base we can see, but we'll correct that when we get over to that point. So we're watching for the halfway point, and when that number stops counting up and starts counting down, that's when we know we're halfway. Think about it, things a little bit early, go into the retrograde position. Now turn retrograde off so we're not wasting that fuel, and just watching the distance. When we're, we're straight across, that's when we know we're about halfway. A little bit more to go. And I'm, I'm not sure why this is, but I've always noticed that the halfway point doesn't seem to get reached until you're straight across from that point plus like an additional half degree and I don't know why that is it doesn't really make sense to me but anyway the number is now counting backwards so we can lower our PEA and that will be right where the base is at so we're gonna bring it all the way down to uh, let's just go to like a kilometer and a half again if it were the moon you could bring it all the way down to like 200 meters and that'd be fine but with the amount of perturbations that we have here around Jupiter, I don't want to go that low. Let's go with that, about two kilometers. Okay, retrograde off. Now our distance off base is 33, almost 34 kilometers. So we're gonna come around to this point and we're gonna do a correction for that. And it's going to require 
a plane change of 1.725. Uh, that's that's the amount of time that we would have to burn the full power of the main engines since I'm and it's we would have to be in the uh, normal plus orientation but since I'm facing this way I'm just gonna use the hover engines it'll accomplish the same thing as going like that and using the engines that way if we're just this way and we burn the engines that way using the hover it'll be the same thing but we'll have to use a little bit longer more time because the hover engines aren't quite as powerful so instead of starting the burn at like 0.75 seconds we'll start the burn at like three seconds okay we're almost there let's get ready to do this just getting over to the uh, proper retrograde point five and uh, good enough let's go ahead and do this burn 20 you can see the distance off base coming down and we're almost there a little bit more hover and that's about it and it's trending downward, so I'm not going to fix it beyond the uh, 482 point. Now we are 4,000 kilometers from the base, so let's uh, bring up VOR VTOL, get within 500 kilometers. We're traveling 1,900 meters per second, so we can guess that it's going to take about... Um, it'll take over 100 kilometers probably to slow ourselves down to a, to a stopping point. On the moon, our orbital velocity is like 1680 and that usually requires like 70 kilometers 75 kilometers so let's bring up burn time calculator and start figuring out how much distance we need put in that amount of delta v and that's actually going to increase a little bit as we go forward so let's put it in as a 1940 yeah we need 129 almost 130 kilometers to break so let's go forward until we have uh, this MFD populated with information. This will come online when we're 500 kilometers out. And since we're rotating around the wrong way, I'm going to go ahead and put in a bit of rotation here. So that way we get back over to retrograde. There we are, kill rotate, and put in just a couple touches of rotation using control thrust just to try to keep us here at the retrograde position, close to it at least. There we are. Oh wow, 300 kilometers out, so we got to think quick. That usually comes online much faster. All right, let's rotate heads up. And we got to work quickly because those numbers are ticking by fast. Put down the landing gear. And yeah, you can see that the DV increased uh, from whatever it was all the way out to 1941, and we put it in as 1940, so we're pretty close, but we can go ahead and correct that, put it in as 1942. So yeah, 130 kilometers plus a little bit more is the is when we need to begin braking. When, we, when the distance says that, we need to begin braking. So I like to uh, have this view, this HUD up to make sure that I'm on the center point, which I can now see I am. Then I'll switch over to surface mode so I know that where I'm at in this direction. I'm going to begin braking here very soon. 130, uh, we'll go with like when we see 131, because in the time that it takes us to respond, we'll probably be closer to that number. Okay. A little bit farther. Okay, here we go. And braking. And I didn't hit the burn, rather I just engaged the engine, so I'll have to remember to shut them off manually. But now we're approaching Ganymede Base and we're burning through, well, was it a thousand? Yeah, almost two thousand meters a second. And we're descending a little bit, and that's okay because we're still quite high. Normally, if you see yourself descending and you're at a very low altitude, you'll want to uh, start pitching the vessel back a little bit to offset the vertical speed, but we, we're high up enough that we don't need to do that. <clears throat> but I will keep myself level with the horizon at least. And when we get within 25 kilometers, we're going to want to switch the navigation to uh, nav 2, 3, or 4. 
so that we have a landing pad selected so that we're not targeting the center of the base. Go ahead and put in a little bit of uh, pitch this way to start watching that vertical speed so it doesn't get out of control. Now we can switch over to the other navigation, either one, pad two, pad three. Let's go with pad three because it's lined up the best. You are clear to land. Watching horizontal speed and distance. You can probably see the base pretty well by now. There it is. And we should have probably brought our altitude down a little bit more at periapsis because it ended up raising and not lowering. Go back closer to the uh, center position here so that we don't increase our altitude. 2500. Distance three kilometers. Are we going to actually overshoot? How's that? How's that possible? I started it on time. I thought. Okay, we're going to overshoot the base a little bit. Actually, we're going to overshoot quite a bit. Hmm. Okay, horizontal speed. Going to have to engage the auto altitude auto hold as well, and I'm actually purposely overshooting the horizontal speaks we now need to go the other direction and let's open the retro doors and I actually I shouldn't have done the auto the out added uh, the altitude auto hold the way I did it because it's uh, it it locks at whatever it's at I should have uh, engaged the hover to hold myself first backing off the horizontal speed a little bit. It's only got a kilometer to go. Rotation. And now I'm going to actually rotate a little bit this way. A little offset. Now as we put in some forward velocity, now I'll hold the altitude. Hold the altitude. Now as we put in forward velocity, Rotation. it's not quite what I meant to do. Okay, now we're only 80. Yeah, I'm still managed to overshoot a little bit. Sloppy. I didn't think the. I f sometimes forget how weak the. Translation. How weak the uh, retro thrusters are compared. I mean, they're super strong. Don't get me wrong, but sometimes you know you get you so used to those ultra powerful main engines that make little silly mistakes. Okay. Rotation. Let's rotate around. Turn off the altitude hold. Start managing our altitude manually. Translation. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. Translation. Okay, just slowing down a little bit. We're only six meters from the center of the pad. Rotation. Okay, we're right above the pad, and let's just kind of zero out our horizontal speed so that we are not moving any particular direction with respect to the landing pad below us. Get it basically zero. It's basically zero there. Okay, now let's take away some of this hover and let our soles drop. Keep an eye on the vertical speed so that we don't drop so quickly that we can't come back out of it. A little bit of translation just to keep ourselves nice and centered. Rotation. Okay, let's do a little bit of a sanity check here with our vertical speed. I'm going to put in a bunch of pro, uh, hover just to make sure that we haven't reached a point where we have a vertical speed that's way too high. Okay, that's good. Let's take out the hover. Translation. Drifting off the pad again. Okay, now we're going to start settling down a little more slowly because we're only 500 meters above the pad. 
Put in a little more hover. Put in a little more hover. We don't want to do it. We don't want to overdo it though, because it'll just take really long to get down. Almost there. Almost complete with the first hop. I suppose we could even press L to turn on the horizon hold so that we don't slip off. Just doing a little bit of tuning there. Okay, more hover. So we're getting pretty close to the ground. Careful not to overdo it. Nope. Overdid it a little bit. Another touch of hover. 30. Another touch of hover. Twenty. A little bit more hover. Now we'll use translation to. Ten. Actually, we could use one more touch of hover. Yeah, that wasn't perfect, but we're down. And we're 2.2 meters from the center of the pad. Let's make sure everything's off. Altitude holds off, horizon levels off. Uh, yeah, we still have some hover engaged, so eliminate the hover. That's why I was kind of seeing these numbers bounce around a little bit. Okay, there we have it. We are We made it from Callisto to to Ganymede, and let's see how much fuel we use. We started off with about 29 kilometers per second, so we used about, not quite seven, because you start off with uh, like 29.4, I believe, and we're down to 22.8, so I don't know if we'll be able to complete the whole, uh, complete our way all the way into Io without ever having to refuel, but uh, I just wanted to make a note, and that's not the point of the video anyway. The point is to kind of show some examples of IMFD. So that's going to be it for this video, and that's going to be it for this part of the hop. So if you like the video, please hit the like button. More importantly, leave a comment down below if you have questions. Leave your questions. I try to always address questions quickly. And if I can't answer your questions, I forward them to Dimitri, and he can answer anything. So uh, links are in the description down below, and I will see you in the next hop.